Hello and welcome to Tiny Code Christmas, 12 days of size coding and demo scene effects in fantasy consoles. There's no leaderboard, no requirement to show your work, just enjoy the festivities. Join the Love Byte Discord, follow us on Twitter and Mastodon. Link is in the description for all of those. If you're stuck, ask for help on the Tiny Code Christmas channel on the Love Byte Discord server. This video is a companion to the TCC.LoveByte Party website, so please check it out for the full picture. There will be a challenge and a size code restriction on that challenge if you want to take it even further. Download Tick80 or Pico8 and let's get started. We'll be starting with Tick80, so if you're here for Pico8, you can skip to that section of the video. Before we do any coding, we just need to make one settings change to Tick80. The settings will persist, so you don't need to do it every time. So type menu and hit enter. Scroll down to options using the arrow keys on the keyboard and scroll up to dev mode and turn it on. This will make it much easier to change between running our program and editing our code and when we've that setting changed hit back and then hit close game and we're ready to start. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new cart. There's one created by default in Tick80 anyway, but we're just going to hit the command new followed by Lua, which is the language that we are going to be using for size coding. There's multiple languages available in Tick80, but Lua is the one that is the most uh, beneficial for size coding. So when we say new Lua, we've created a new cart, and what we're going to do is we're going to hit the escape key to change into the editor so that we can edit the code. By default, there is some code in that, um, you can see it there, in that default cartridge. I'm going to run that and take a look at what it generates. So there's a button up here to run, and it tells me there's a keyboard shortcut to control R as well to run it. So I'm going to hit that button, and we'll see that it runs the default cart. So that has some code in there to move the Tick80 logo around the place, and it obviously prints out Hello World. So to stop this and go back to my code, I'm going to hit the escape key on the keyboard. And now I'm back into my code. So we don't need any of this code. We're going to start fresh with some of our own code, but we are going to keep just this part, function tick. This is the heart of tick 80. It is a function that is called 60 times a second, and everything that we put inside of this function is going to be run 60 times a second. And that includes printing out uh, maybe text to the screen, doing graphics, doing our per pixel effects, and all of the calculations that back that up as well. So for today's challenge, you're uh, to make some kind of a Christmas scene, including a Christmas tree, and then the extra challenge is, of course, to keep that under 256 bytes and to see how much you can fit in while keeping that code size low. So the size of the code over here is 115 um, characters so far. That we have um, that we have typed in here, and you can see that's because I still have left some up at the top. So just double check um, your your size that you've you've actually removed everything. So this is the number of characters, letters, and spaces and numbers that we have typed so far into this function. And our goal when we're working with size coding is to keep that below 256 bytes, maybe up below 128 bytes, or even 64 bytes. There is a different um, metric that we'll be talking about later on, which is the actual file size. But for now, we're just going to focus on the code size, which is literally, literally the number of letters. So um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the CLS function. And CLS clears the screen. And if I run that, you'll see that we now have a blank screen. And by default, CLS clears to color zero. So what's color zero? Let's take a look at the sprite editor up here in the top left. Um, and again, you can also hit the F2 key to change to it. So if I click that, we are just here to take a look at these colors. This is the Sweetie 16 palette, and all of these colors are part uh, of the default um, colors that we can use in Tick80. And you can see they're numbered zero. So if you look up here in the the menu bar, color 0 to color 15. So 16 colors and color 0 is the default so that is what CLS cleared the screen for. I can put in any of those other colors in here. CLS 1, 2, 3, etc. and it will clear the screen in that color. So I'm going to change it back to the default and we're going to take a look at some of the other shape commands in Tick80 but not all of them. 
because you're going to have to read the documents to find out the all of the shapes and to see which ones you can use as part of your challenge. So first shape I'm going to show you is circle and the circle then um, takes a number of parameters. So uh, what I want to do is just show you how you can actually look up these commands once you know the name of the function. You can go back to the command line and you can type help and then circ and it will tell me that the circle takes an x, y, radius and color and it gives us a bit of technical information about it as well. So I'm going to give it some coordinates. I'm going to draw my circle at 0, 0, and we're going to use this to find out where the origin is in tick 80. So 0, 0, and I'm going to give it a diameter of um, 20, so a radius of 10, and then I'm going to give it the color, I'm going to give it 2. And if I run it, we should see a red circle, but it's up here in the top left hand corner. So I set the center of it to be zero, zero. So if we actually look up here, the center of that circle is the top left hand corner, which means that the center of the, the origin for the coordinates in tick 80 is the top left hand corner with X being zero, Y equal to zero being here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down a bit and I'm going to put it at coordinate 100, 100. So X 100 pixels in and y is 100 pixels down. We can draw multiple circles if you want, and 110, 110, I can put that in, and you'll see that they um, are both drawn. And again, I can just move the x and y coordinates so they're separate, or I can use the fact that they overlap to create a more complicated shape. And again, you could maybe add a third one there and make yourself a little a little love bite logo or something like that. So um, circ does circles, rect does rectangles, and we'll go and take a look at the documentation for rect as well, which is help rect. And this function has x, y with height and color. So I'm going to change back to the code editor and I'm going to say x, y, 10, 10 width. I give it a width of 100 and I'll give it a height of five and I'll give it a color of one, which is purple. And you can see that we have drawn that rectangle up the top left there. So the other functions that might be of use to you are um, border functions. So for any of these ones that we've drawn, we can change the name to have B at the end of it. And now we will get an unfilled border only version with the same color. And some other functions that might be useful for drawing a Christmas tree, for example, would be the triangle function. And if we take a look at help try, you'd see it takes x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and color. So draws a triangle filled with the color, and there is obviously a try B function as well. So some other functions that might be of use are picks, which allows you to color an individual pixel. And then there is line, which allows you to draw a line. So with this, we can build up a scene. And again, there's an example scene on the website, and I'll throw it up here as well to give you an idea of what you can work towards in this. When we do start adding a lot of things, like we've, we've added our circles there, um, if we want to add multiples of these, you can see the the size of the code starts adding up fairly quickly. If I just copy and paste a few of these, um, you know, we've already used up more than half of our, our uh, available space with just a few circles. So what we need to do is we need to think about how we can minimize the size of our code when we're writing these things. So I'm going to just show you a quick example with the circles and I'm going to draw something manually first with my circles and I'm going to, let's say 90, um, no, X is 100, 90, 10, 2 and let me see. 80. So now I've drawn my three circles like that and this takes up a quite a bit of um, space. So the code is largely the same. There's only one small bit 
changing. So what we can actually do is we can use a for loop in tick 80. And what a for loop allows us to do is create a variable that will go from a value to another value in a certain amount of steps. So what we're doing here with our for loop is we have said, give me a variable i. I want you to start at 80. I want you to end up at 120, but I want you to move from the 80 to the 120 in steps of 20. And for each step, I want you to call this bit block of code. Now, how many steps do we have here? So 80 to 120 in, in steps of 20, that should give us 80, 100, and 120, which means that instead of our previous three lines here, we're going 80, 100, and 120, we can shorten this code to this. And this has the exact same output, and we're after minimizing the amount of characters that we used. Obviously, we're after using some for the for loop, but if I bring this back now to, let's say, 60, now I have four of them. If I bring it back to 50, um, sorry, 40, I have five of them, and so on. So you can see that instead of having a cert command for each and every one, I can use a for loop like this to define the start, the end, and the step for where I want to take it. So that is going to be one of the, tech, the, the techniques that we use to keep the size of our code down when we're size coding is to not have the full function call spelled out each and every time, but just to use a for loop to minimize the amount of times that that code is called. Now, before we go any further, we will want to save our work. So uh, we're going to hit escape to go back to the command line, and I am just going to hit save, and then I'm going to give my cartridge a name. So I'm just going to call this TCC day one. And when I hit enter, you can see that the cart TCC day one dot tick was saved. I'm going to transition back to the code editor. And now at any point I can hit uh, control S or uh, command S and that will save the file and save my changes. Welcome to the Pico 8 section. So we are going to be using the education edition for this. This is free on the web. And again, there's the links on the the website tcc.lovebyte.party which has more information on tiny code christmas and we're going to start off by changing to the editor so when we boot up pico 8 we get this screen with our little command line and again we can type help and get some other information on commands we'll come back to this in a second but i'm going to hit escape which will bring us into the editor now the editor here is a basic text editor and everything is lowercase. So if you type an uppercase character, um, you're going to get uh, glyphs like this, which can be used um, as icons or characters in your program as part of text. But um, the first thing that we have to do is type function, draw, and then end. So this function is the heart of our Pico 8 programs and this is going to be called 30 times per second. Now the uh, tick 80 was 60 frames per second but the Pico 8 actually has limitations built into it to restrict how much processing can be done and that's something that we'll get into it um, later on. But for now we just need to know that draw runs at 30 frames per second. There is a different function which you can put in update 60 and it will update and draw at 60 frames per second. But again, um, we'll, we'll stick with the basic uh, 30 for now. So if Pico 8 is coming up against those limitations, it will drop back from 60 to 30 to 15. And older machines and maybe the web version of Pico may not be able to run at the full 60 frames per second, depending on what else is going on um, on the computer at that time. We are going to write our first function, which is CLS and clear the screen. So we're going to run this code and it is going to clear the screen. And we can, that, that's essentially running continuously. And then when I hit escape, 
and escape again, it'll bring me back to the editor. So it brings me back to the command prompt first. Then if I hit escape again, it brings me back to the editor. So to run that, it's control and R. And to stop it, it's escape. So you can see here, CLS uh, clears the screen. I am going to put a number inside it. And I'm going to run it again. And now you can see that the color has changed. So the other editors in Pico 8 are not going to be used for size coding at this moment in time, but we are going to take a look at the sprite editor up here. So if we click on this icon, we can see that there are 16 colors here. And when I hover over them, you'll see down in the toolbar at the bottom that there is a color number associated with them. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up to 15. So 16. I'm going to change back to the code editor, which is the two brackets. And I'm going to just put in a different color here, run it, and we'll see that it clears it with that. So I'm going to change it back to CLS. And CLS gives us black. And if I put in CLS 0, that's the first color that we saw, which is black. So I can by default, just leave off that zero and it will, it will clear the screen. So what we're going to talk about today are shape functions, essentially, in Pico 8. And these functions are what we're going to do to draw shapes. We will get started with the circle function. So the circ function, CIRC, takes a few parameters. Now, we're going to drop back to the command line by hitting escape. And I'm going to type help circ. It will draw the circle at x, y with a radius of r. When a negative radius is given, nothing is drawn. So we have x, y, and r, and then we have color. And because that's in brackets, it's optional. So we can use the default color, or we can set the color separately. But we're going to include the color for now. So I am going to put in at 0 and 0. And I'm going to give it a radius of 10. And I'm going to give it a color of 3. So let's run this and see what happens. So control R. Okay, so we can see, like the tick 80, that the origin for the Pico 8 is in the top left-hand corner with X equal to zero and Y equal to zero being up there. And I'm just going to move this down a bit so that we can see that if I move it down, that is 20 here and 20 down. So that circle is an unfilled circle. And if I want to change it so that it's filled, I use circ fill. And if I run that now, we'll see that that circle is filled. So the other um, option similar to the circle is the oval. And this has um, a slightly different approach to how it, how it works. So we'll go help oval draw an ellipsoid bounded by the given rectangle. So in this case, we have to specify two coordinates. Um, and I'll give it, let's say, uh, 30, 30, so 30 down, 30 in. And then let's say 100 and 100. So maybe between here and here. And what I want to do is, that's fairly square. So I'm actually going to make this um, 50. And I'll make this one. Um, I'll make this one eighty, and I'll give it the color of four. So you can see that I just need to make this a little less circular, and you can see that it will draw essentially a circle, or will draw an ellipse in that boundary between those points. So thirty, thirty is up in the top left, and 80, 100 is in the bottom right. And again, if I want to fill that in, I can use oval fill. So the rest of the functions that might be of use to you are Line, and line takes two parameters that are mandatory, and two that are optional. 
and then color as well obviously which is optional so line lets you draw from a point to a point or it actually continues on to the end of the last line so it'll actually use um, the end of the last line to the new coordinates so allowing you to kind of essentially draw um, one after the other all linked up without having to to remember the previous the previous location so that's line another one that you might want to use is rect for rectangle and again you'll have a similar one rect fill which will allow that to fill and they are the functions that you'll be using mostly for this now so i can't there's no function to draw a triangle in pico 8 which does make drawing a christmas tree slightly more difficult but not that difficult now we're going to take a look at some size coding tips so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a few circles and i have these at 20 20 10 30 so i'm going to leave it at 20 40 and i'm going to put in another one 20 60 and if i run this we should see three circles that are joined up now when we're coding for the Pico 8 um, as part of this series we want to make sure that we are monitoring the character count so when we're programming we need to take look down here at the bottom right hand corner there's three different modes there's token count which um, Pico 8 uses for performance there is the character count which is what we're concerned with for these challenges and the challenge that we want is to keep our code under 256 characters when I am writing out this code circfill um, you, you can see every time I type out another one, a significant portion of our um, our available space is used up. And again, it's size coding, so even though this again has over sixty five thousand letters as a possibility, we're going to be aiming a lot lower than that. So one of the techniques that we use in size coding is to eliminate this type of repetition. Uh, where we might have a pattern like this is to again look for um, things like this for 20 40 60 80 and to reduce this using a for loop so that instead of one call to circ fill or instead of four we're just doing one so i am going to create a for loop and i'm going to start it at 20 i'm going to go up to 80 um, these are inclusive and i'm going to go in steps of 20. so what this does is it will create this variable i, which will hold the value 20. It will run this code. Then it will add 20 to it, so it'll be 40. It'll run this code, 60, run this code, and then 80, it'll run this code. So we're actually replacing all of these variables here with i. So we can just use one call to the circle function and put i in here instead and if i run it we get the exact same output the for loop again creates this variable i it assigns it the value of 20 it runs the code it goes back up and adds 20 to it making it 40 runs the code adds 20 making it 60 runs the code adds 20 making it 80 runs the code and you can see we have our four circles there and if i want to add an extra one and just make this count up to 100 no problem and we've only had an increase by one character so we went from 78 to 79 and we got an extra circle so these are the kind of techniques that we need to think about when size coding so that while it's nice to map out our ideas with the, the individual shapes what you want to do is use something like a for loop or some of the other types of loops to minimize that repetition so when we're finished in Pico 8, especially the education edition, what we want to do is we need to save our code. So to save our code, I'm going to hit escape, brings me back to the command prompt. You can see it flashing at the top. I'm just going to hit save and you'll see that it downloads it from your web browser to your desktop. And if you want to load it back in, you can hit load, hit enter, and that will pop up a file dialog and you can choose the file to work with.